boys and girls, this is Mr. Peavy. Welcome to the Mr. Peavy Show. I'm going to read you this book. The name of the... It's called The Unbreakable Code. Race up the trail, sending pebbles skidding behind him. When he reached his favorite hiding place, he fell to the ground, out of breath, here between the old pinion tree and towering walls of the canyon. He felt safe. The river full of late summer rain looked like silver threaded winding through his grandfather's farmland. They would be looking for him now, but he was never coming down. His mother had married the man from Minnesota. There was nothing he could do about that, but he was not going with them. He closed his eyes, rested in the stillness. The faint bleak of a mountain goat echoed off the canyon walls. Suddenly a voice boomed above him. Shouldn't you be packing? John's eye flew open. It was his grandfather on horseback. Your stepfather's coming with the pickup in an hour. I'm not going, John said. You have to go. School's starting soon, said grandfather. Stepping down from his horse, you'll be back next summer. John dug his toes deeper into the dirt. I want to stay with you, he said. Grandfather's soft brown eyes disappeared in the wrinkles of a smile. John thought they were the kindest eyes he ever seen. You're going to be all right, Grandfather said. You have an unbreakable code. What's that? asked John. Grandfather sat down and began to speak gently in Navajo. The sounds wove up and down, in and out, as warm and familiar as patterns of one of grandmother's Navajo blankets. John learned lean his head against his grandfather's knee. The unbreakable code is what saved my life in World War II, he said. It's the Navajo language. John's shoulders sagged. Navajo couldn't help him. Nobody in his school spoke Navajo. I probably forgot how to speak Navajo, he whispered. Navajo is your language, said his grandfather sternly. Navajo, you must never forget. The lump in John's throat was close to a sob. You don't know what it's like there, he said. His grandfather continued quietly in Navajo. I had to go to a government boarding school when I was five. It was the law. They gave me an English name and cut my hair off. I wasn't allowed to speak my language. Anyone who spoke Navajo had to chew on square, squares of soap. Believe me, I chewed a lot of soap during those years. Speak English, they said, but Navajo was my language, and Navajo I would never forget. Every summer I went home to, the, to herd the sheep and help with the crops. I cried when the cottonwood turned gold, and it was time to go back. Finally, one night in the 10th grade, I was working in the kitchen when I heard a bulletin on the school radio. Navajo need for a special duty in the Marines must be between the ages of 17 and 32, fluent in English in Navajo, in excellent physical, physical condition. Just before lights out, I snuck past the box and out the door towards the open plain. I felt like a wild horse with a lasso finally off his neck. Out in the open, the stars danced above me, and the tumbleweed weeds blew by my feet as I ran. The next day, I enlisted. But you weren't 17, said John. The reservation had no birth records, Grandfather said with a grin. Two weeks later, I was on a bus headed for boot camp with 28 other Navajos. I stared out the window into the darkness. I was going outside of the four sacred mountains for the first time in my life. Weren't you scared, asked John? Of course, said Grandfather. I didn't know where I was going or what our mission was. Most of us, I didn't know how I could measure up to the people out there I heard about so much. How did, how did you, asked John, chewing his fingernails. His grandfather began to laugh. We were known as the toughest platoon at boot camp. 
We had done so much marching at boarding school that the drills was no problems. Hiking in the desert of California with a heavy pack was no worse than hauling water in the canyon in midsummer. And I've done that since I was four years old. As for the survivor exercises, we had all gone without food for a few days. A Navajo learns to survive. One weekend, we bust. They bus us to a new camp in San Diego. On Monday, we were marched into a building with bars on every window. They locked us in a classroom at the end of a long, narrow corridor. An officer told us our mission was top secret. We were not allowed to tell our families. We were desperately needed for successful invasion of the Pacific Islands. So far, the Japanese have been able to intersect and decode all American radio messages in only minutes. This meant that no information could be passed between American ship planes and land forces. The government thought the Navajo language might be the secret weapon. Only a few outsiders had ever heard, learned it. Most important, the language had never been written down, so there was no alphabet for the Japanese to discover and decode. He gave us a list of more than 200 military terms, terms to code. Everything had to be memorized. No trace of the code would ever be found in writing. It would live or die with us in battle. When the officer walked out of the room, I looked at the Navajo next to me and began to laugh. All these years, they told us to forget Navajo, and now the government needs it to save the country. We marched every day to that classroom. We were never allowed to leave the building. We couldn't even use the bathroom by ourselves. Each night, an officer locked our notes in a safe. The code had to be simple and fast. We would have only one chance to send each message. After that, the Japanese could be tracing our location to bomb us or trying to record the code. We chose words from nature that would be easy to remember under fire. Since Navajo has no alphabet, we made up our own. A began Wulalchi. Aunt asked John in English. Grandfather nodded. B was shush. Bear said John. C was Mosai. D B E D Z. His grandfather continued through the alphabet. Each time he named the Navajo word, John answered with, with the English. We named the aircraft after birds. The dive bombers was a chicken hawk. The observation plane was an owl. A patrol plane was a crow. Bomber, a buzzard. At night, we would lie in our bunks and test each other. Pretty soon, I was dreaming in code. Since we would be radio men, we had to learn all kinds of radio operations. We were taught how to take a radio apart and put it together in total darkness. And Jap the Japanese fought at night, so we would have to do most of our work in complete darkness. Even the tiniest match flame would be a target. When the day came for our code to be tested in front of top marine officer, I was terrified. I knelt on one end of the field with our radio ground set. The, the officer marched towards me. Behind a building at the other end of the field, another code talker sat on the military guard waiting for my transmission. One officer handed me a message, receiving steady machine gun fire request re reinforcements. It took only seconds for me to speak into the microphone in Navajo code. The officer sent a runner to the end of the field to check speed and accuracy of the message. The Navajo at the end of the end handed him the exact message written in English before he could come around the corner of the building. They tested us over and over. Each time we were successful. The government requested 200 Navajo recruits immediately. Two of our groups stayed behind to train them. The rest of us was on our way. Tell me about the fighting, said John. Suddenly grandfather's face looked as creased and battered as the canyon walls behind him. After a long pause, he said, what I saw is better left back there. I would not want to touch my home or family with those pictures. Before we invaded, I looked out at that island. It had been flattened and burned. Less, this, 
Let this never happen to a beautiful island again, I thought. I just stayed on the deck of the ship thinking about the ceremonies they were doing for me at home. We invaded at dawn. I almost drowned in a bomb crater before I even got to shore. I was trying to run through the water and bullets when I felt myself sinking into a bottomless hole. My 80-pound radio pack pulled me straight down. I lost my rifle padding on the surface. On the beach, it was all I could do just to survive. I remember lay lying there with gunfire fire flying past my ears. A creek that ran to the beach was clear when I first lay, lay there. By noon, it was blood red. The worst were the fallen soldiers I had to turn over to go forward. I couldn't even stop to say I was sorry. I had just, I had had to run over them and keep going. Okay, boys and girls, that's all I'm going to read for, uh, for you today. Be sure to go to the public library and get The Unbreakable Code by Sarah Hunter and illustrated by Julia Minor. Okay, boys and girls, this is what's coming up next. <laughs> hey, boys and girls, this is Mr. Peavy. Welcome. We're here at Wright Pet Air Force Base, and here's my good friend, Pat Hughes. He's going to fly in a hot air balloon. Now, there's different types of balloons. The balloons filled with hot air or helium. It's called a combination gas. Now you see Mr. Hughes is they're fitting him up in belts, special belts to make sure he does not fall out of the balloon. Now you see he's sitting down in the specially seat contraction and there's his friends making sure everything's okay. They're checking all the the uh, uh, things to make sure that Mr. Hughes is safe. Now, boys and girls, this is fun, but you have to be specially trained in order to know how to ride in a hot air balloon. Now, here he is. He's going way up in the air, boys and girls. Look how high he's going, boys and girls. Boy, he's way up in the air. You can see the cars and trucks. Boy, this is really fun. And, boys and girls, this would be fun if you could have your, your you see Mr. Hughes' uh, knees. See how high he's up. Boy, this is really neat, boys and girls. You should try this sometime with a specially trained adult. They also got it hooked with harnesses, so make sure he doesn't fly away. There he is, boys and girls, way up in the sky. He's like a bird in a bright yellow uh, helium-filled balloon. And these balloons travel all over the world. There are people who have traveled in balloons. The first uh, balloon flight was in England in 1784. And this is inventing flight, boys and girls. So right now we're gonna watch uh, not only hot air balloons, what they call Zeppelins. These are specially helium-filled uh, balloons that they use. And right now you're seeing uh, some of the uh, contraption that they use to fill the air. And they're filling this balloon with helium, boys and girls. And there you go. And that is the compartment where the people are get into the balloon. And we see that uh, you see the contraption and see that they're big balloons. They're probably bigger than your house, boys and girls. And there's there's the man, see the uh, bottom part. That's where the man goes in. And there's the propellers. And they fly. Sometimes, boys and girls, I know you look up in the sky, you see these balloons. They're huge. And the compartment where the people are in are very, very small compared to uh, the balloon. The balloon is probably three times as big as your house. Huge balloons. And some of these balloons fly in the air. And they're very, very silent. They're called zeppelins. And man has been using balloons for hundreds and hundreds of years to travel and also uh, for war times, they would help during the war times, long before they had airplanes, boys and girls. Look how big that balloon is, boys and girls. And boys and girls, I'm gonna let you watch this and see and enjoy the balloon.
point at me. Oh, welcome boys and girls. This is Bob Bob the Clown. Welcome to my art uh, room. And we're going today, we're going to paint. I know a couple of uh, episodes back, I taught you how to draw. So now we're going to paint. So what we're going to do, first of all, the equipment we need to paint, we need paint brushes. We need, of course, paint. And we need something to paint on. Now, I'm going to paint on uh, cardboard. It might help her over here. Thank you. We're going to paint on poster board. This is poster board that you can get at any uh, discount store. I'm going to press it here so it won't come down, boys and girls. OK. All right. A little lumpy there. All right. Now, first of all, boys and girls, we're going to use um, blue. Now, I'd like to know if you can tell me the primary colors, OK? I, I've told you one primary color. Can you tell me the other primary colors, boys and girls? All right. How about red? Yes, that's a primary color, boys and girls. What's the other primary color, boys, boys and girls? What's the other color? Can you guess? Did you say yellow, boys and girls? If you said yellow, you're correct. These are the primary colors. Now, with these colors, you can mix any color you want to. Okay, for example, we're going to make a, a uh, we're going to paint an outdoor scene because I love outdoors. It's becoming, uh, it's going to be warm again. So we're going to paint an outdoor scene. Now, uh, first of all, we need to make, mix our colors. Okay, in order to, uh, I'm going to use green. Now, do you know how to make green, boys and girls? Okay, did anyone say blue? Okay, and I've got a palette here that I'm going to put. And what I like to do, boys and girls, have several paint brushes when I paint, uh, mix my colors so you won't contaminate the color. Contaminate is a big word, but that, don't, that means that you don't want to mix, you want to mix one color in the jar of another color because if you mess that color up, it won't, it won't be pure color anymore. It will be messed up. Now, what, what's the other color we need to make green, boys and girls? Can you guess? From the primary colors, remember we, have prime, we got blue, red, and yellow. Can you guess? Did you guess yellow, boys and girls? If you guessed yellow, you were correct. You mix yellow and blue to make green. OK, so I'm going to put some paint here. I'm going to put some paint here. And then what I'm going to do, boys and girls, I'm going to have a special paintbrush to mix my colors, OK? Another paintbrush. So I'm going to put, put, mix that together. And let's see if we come, it begins to make green. Yes, boys, you see that, boys and girls? Green. We have green. So we know that yellow and blue makes green. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start, oh, about halfway uh, in the paper. And I'm going to draw the grass. I'm going to start making the grass, boys and girls. OK. And we're going to paint the grass. And what you need to do, boys and girls, when you make uh, mixed paint, it's a good idea to put uh, mix a lot in the beginning so you won't have to keep going back. OK. So I'm going to mix that. And that yellow and blue. Remember, boys and girls, yellow and blue makes green. Yellow and blue makes green. And I'm going to get a bigger paintbrush, too, because with a bigger paintbrush, we can cover bigger, larger areas. areas. OK? OK, so we're going to paint that by the bottom of, of uh, the page here green because I love green grass. I know all boys and girls love the grass, the smell of cut grass in the summertime. There you go, boys and girls. We're going to keep painting until we cover the entire area. Rem remember to saturate, saturate your paint brushes, OK? Make sure you, paint, you have enough paint on your paint brushes. And then also, too, boys and girls, when you're painting, make sure you have old newspaper spread around so you won't make a mess. Spread your newspaper on your table or wherever place that you can paint, maybe your dining room table. You got to ask mommy or daddy or grandma or whoever's uh, taking care of you if you can use the, the table. Because you want to make sure you do not uh, make a mess. We don't want to make a mess when, we, when we're doing our artwork, OK? Then I'm going to use this paintbrush, too, because it's got a lot of some green on here. 
Okay. And we're going to cover the bottom of this. And this is the ground. This is going to represent the grass. Everyone loves to paint. I know all the boys and girls out there loves to paint. So we're going to cover that up. We just got a little bit more to go. And the reason I'm not going down here, boys and girls, is because I don't want to paint my uh, blackboard. So uh, we, with you, of course, you're going to have uh, newspaper. So you'll be able to paint all the way. So I'm going to just leave that white line there. And because I don't want to put paint on my chalkboard, but you'll have newspaper. You'll be able to cover your area up. Okay, now, we're going to use it. And you know what? If you got white places showing, don't worry about that. You know, don't worry. Okay, now, boys and girls, so we've got, we've got that. And I want my helper to, uh, to hand me some water over there. Thank you, Rob. Um, next, boys and girls, I, we're going to make a house, okay? And I'm going to teach you how to mix colors. I have colors over here that's already mixed, but what I want to do, and always keep your paintbrush in water. You know, you get you a cup, an old cup, preferably a, a, a plastic cup. Don't uh, use a glass, because glasses are dangerous. You may can fall and, uh, uh, and um, you may get hurt on that. So always use plastic. Keep your paintbrushes in your water. Oh, if you have a paper towel, use a paper towel to blot your paintbrushes. If not, boys and girls, you can go ahead and use newspaper. You can just go, you know, do this and rinse your paintbrushes off like that. Now, now, boys and girls, we're going to, you know what? I noticed in my, all my paints, I don't have black. So I can't show you how to make brown. But I'll, sh you know what? I can uh, tell you just in case you want to make brown at home. Blue and red and a touch of black. Not a lot of black. Okay, next time I'm going to make sure I have black in my paint. But right now, I'm going to cheat. I have brown already mixed. So blue and red and a touch of black makes brown. So right now, right now we're going to, right now we're going to um, paint the house. Okay, draw the house. Okay, and I want you to, boys and girls, make sure when you draw houses, I want to make sure you you know, take your time. Okay. Now, we're going to also make the roof of the house. You know, and you know how to make a triangle. I think all of you boys and girls know how to make a triangle, so we're going to make the roof of the house like so. Okay, and then, you know, if you want to make want to make trees, boys and girls. Okay, trees on this side. Okay. All right, boys and girls. Okay, boys and girls. You know what? We we almost out of time. So you see now how to start a painting. Okay. So what you can do. Boys and girls at home, it's, you're going to finish this painting. And I want you to make sure you color everything. Don't forget, you know, you have a door. You make doors and windows and different things like that. So right now, boys and girls, uh, Bob Baba Clown is getting ready to sign off. And you, everybody have a nice day. So bye-bye out there.